The Innovation Journey Remember our old friend Mr J. Murray Spangler and his attempt to bring to the world the electric vacuum suction sweeper? Now his story is a good reminder of the challenge because innovation is not just like the light bulb moment we see in the cartoons. It's not just a bright idea, it's that journey to create value from the idea. And it's not a nice, neat, straight line journey. It's a twisting, winding road with all sorts of roadblocks and obstacles, stops and starts, blind alleys. It's not easy, but eventually we can create value from our ideas. Now, here's some examples of inventions. These are all in the US Patent Office. And what that indicates is that somebody believed in their idea, not just as a light bulb moment, but enough to write it down, to get some lawyers to help, perhaps somebody to help draw the pictures, but essentially to lodge a patent. However, none of these, as far as I know, are actually in widespread use in the world outside. There's the famous gas-filled umbrella idea, the musical flamethrower, a little gadget to keep your unborn baby entertained for nine months by strapping a, a Walkman to your tummy, uh, a device for decoying ducks if you want to hunt them and still staying dry, and for me, the genius who should get the star prize, the man who he thought the world needed, a cheese-flavoured cigarette. Now, these are all examples of wacky inventions, and you see them all over the internet. But what they remind us of is that innovation is not just about invention. It's much more. It's about creating value from ideas. And that really reminds us of the importance of understanding innovation as a journey. After all, what goes on in our head, our mental model, how we think about something, shapes what we do about it. What we pay attention to, what we give resources to, what we manage. And so if we think about the innovation challenge, what we really have is a series of stages. Now, the good news is that although innovation takes place in many different contexts, all sorts of different places, nonetheless, the pattern is still more or less the same. It isn't simply a light bulb moment, an event. It's a process, a series of activities over time. And what we've learned about this journey is that it has a number of stages which we need to understand and try and manage. The first of these is to search. We know that innovation comes from all sorts of directions. There isn't one single source of innovation. Innovation is triggered by all sorts of possibilities. It might come out of the research lab. People in white coats come up with some new knowledge, which we can then deploy. It might come from the market, the market need pulling innovation through. It might be like our dear Mr. Spangler. His chest and his problems with sweeping the floor led him to create something, solving his own problem, which then solved a problem for others. It could be the government saying, you can't do that or you must do that. And that shapes the way we have to innovate. In fact, what we know about innovation is it comes from many different directions, which means that the first part of our journey has to be searching for those opportunities. But that sets up a problem for our second part of the journey, which is that we then have to select. We haven't got infinite resources. So out of all the things we could do, we have to choose what are we going to do and why? Selection. Then we get to the stage of implementation, actually making it happen. It's a simple single word, but there's an awful lot going on in there. Essentially, innovation is about uncertainty. When we start, we don't know if the technology will work, if that market really is there and will value what we're doing, if the competition have come up with something that's going to challenge us, if the government's changed the rules of the game, if, 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 lots of different questions, and we only learn the answers as we go through this process of implementation. So we have to manage that process very carefully because we've got limited resources, but it's more than just project management. It's project management dealing with uncertainty. Even when we get to the point where we can launch a successful product, like Mr. Spangler actually manufacturing and selling his vacuum cleaner, can we scale it? Can we create the real value? And can we capture that? And of course, if we're smart, we might at the end of that journey, not just say, phew, sit back in the deck chair and say, wow, we, we've made it, but rather use that as an opportunity to learn for the next time. So there's a very simple model of the journey. 
essentially a number of stages which have different characteristics and which we need to understand in order to manage the innovation journey again and again. Anyone might get lucky once, repeating the trick means we need a map of this kind for the journey. But we've also learned that there are a number of influences on that journey, three in particular. If we take the metaphor of a, a sea voyage, a journey, then it isn't just about a ship leaving harbour and heading across the wild stormy seas to a destination. There are some important influences. And the first is knowing where we're going. Knowing where we are, able to correct the course, essentially what we need is the navigation skills. And that relates in the innovation world to having a strategy knowing what we're trying to do and able to make those mid-course corrections. You know, when the GPS says you're off course, recalculating, that's part of what strategy has to do. But it's essentially guiding how we make and where we make that journey to. The second really important thing, if you are making a voyage on a ship, is it's about people. And essentially on the ship, you need a leader, a captain and a good, experienced crew. In innovation, it's absolutely that story. We know that innovation is hugely influenced by building a successfully innovative organization, getting a culture in which people can share their ideas, put their energies together and directing and guiding that. And the third really important part is if we make our voyage at sea, whether we're loading the ship and getting ready to start or unloading it at the other end, or on long voyages, perhaps meeting up and resupplying in the middle of the voyage. But essentially, it's not a solo act. It's a multiplayer game. And that very much is true of innovation as well. Successful innovators build networks. We have a word we'll come back to again and again. We have a word these days called open innovation. And open innovation basically says not all the smart people are working in any single organization. Innovation depends on drawing in networks, building a system through which we can innovate. So making the journey, the picture in its totally looks like this. We have our core stages that we've already seen, search, select, implement, capture value and learn. But we also have that influence by having a clear strategy and building an innovative organization inside, having the leadership to steer that and having networks of support. So let's summarize. Innovation's a journey with multiple stages. So we need a map for that journey, a process model. In addition to that core map, we need to recognize there are three key influences, strategy and navigation making sure we know where we're going and that we can correct and adapt as we go. Leadership and building the innovative organization and having extensive external networks of support. And in all of this, the key lesson we've learned, not least from those organizations who've been innovating successfully for a long time, is they haven't got there by accident. What they've done is learn at the end of each of their voyages and build capability for the next time.